Today we're driving the 2021 Ford F-150 Hybrid. This is the Power Boost Hybrid with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6. We've driven two other F-150s this year, and I'll be honest, this is probably the one that I've been wanting to drive the most and that I'm most excited to share with you guys. It's got the Pro Power on board. You've got the generator mode. This truck is so cool. I think it's gonna be so useful to so many different types of consumers from people who work with their truck and really put it to use in the field and uh, those who just wanna take it camping and do cool things with the outdoors with it. You could literally power pretty much anything you could, you could carry with this truck. You can even plug your Tesla in like Charlie did in a recent video on Daily Motor. So there's a lot to cover on this. This one is painted in rapid red, which I think looks quite good. Let's hop in. We'll go over some of the features in this because there are quite a few things that are spec'd differently in this F-150 than the other two that we've had. The first one being this has a column shifter. No strange moving shifter that goes up and down in this one, which I think I kind of like. And it's a nice column shifter too. It has a good throw to it, a good feel. It's not too tough. It's very accurate. Good job, Ford. That's, I think, what all the F-150s should probably come with, but that's okay. The consumers have spoken, and they want their foldable shifter. We have the table here, which is great. You don't have to fold the shifter down to use it. Nice flat surface, lots of room for activities underneath in this massive cavernous truck-like center console. We've got quite a bit of storage options here. Lots of cup holders, plug-in for Apple CarPlay. It's also wireless, which is great. And uh, we've got this infotainment here, Sync 4, which works great. We've done quite a lot of videos on these systems. All of this works really well. Um, it's pretty responsive, pretty quick. Lots of cool different menus and things that you can see inside this infotainment. I like watching the power flow meter. We'll show you guys that when we go for a drive and you can kind of see how the hybrid system is interacting with the engine and regenerative braking and all that good stuff. You've got so many settings and customizable features in this truck. And of course you can go in and do zone lighting. And I think once sunset hits, we'll be able to see how far those lights go at night. Uh, I was looking at them in broad daylight earlier today and they're pretty bright. So I think they'd light up the surroundings of the truck quite a bit. Not maybe as much as massive light bars on the roof, but enough to be able to see what you're doing. A lot to go over. We've got this uh, digital center display here with some neat little information options. You've got this EV coach, which I like to look at. And of course you can configure your menu and just add a bunch of different options in here. Uh, that's the great thing about this truck is it's all configurable from how it comes out of the factory, delivered to you, and to all of the settings and features within the vehicle. This specific truck does not have the power tailgate, but it does have the nice uh, slow opening tailgate. And then here's all of your plug outlets. Pretty awesome stuff. You got a 240 back there, 30 amp max, 7.2 kilowatt, and then of course a bunch of 120 volt, 20 amp, 2.4 kilowatt max plugs. All very cool. Nice little tie down areas. Get a space for bed lights that quickly turn on and off. Tie down points here, but also double as beer bottle openers. <laughs> it's always interesting to see uh, car manufacturers combining beer bottle openers in their vehicles, but that's okay. And of course, a ruler to measure whatever you need to measure. We've got the step that's been around for quite a while. Works great, a little bit tedious to put up, but makes getting in and out of the bed so much easier. This truck has a bed liner, which looks and feels really solid, really nice, very well sprayed in. Yeah, all good things. And it even numbers the steps that you should take to, uh, to pull all this back together. Very cool. Just don't pinch your fingers anywhere. Of course, we've got the little spots for the C-clamps, place to put pencils and all sorts of different things in your workspace. I mean, everyone's use case for this truck is gonna be slightly different, but I think Ford has put so much 
usability into this that anyone could find a unique scenario where this would be just a lot more useful than the previous F-150. This does have the tow package. I don't know exactly what this is rated for. 11,000, 12,000, 13, 14,000 pounds. It's a lot. I mean, basically what that means is that, you know, I think honestly, if you're towing more than 10, 11,000 pounds on a regular basis, you should go to a, uh, a heavy duty truck, you know, get an F-250 or F-350. But this F-150 is just gonna be towing, it's gonna be able to tow those five, six, 8,000 pound loads with so much more ease because the ratings are so much higher. You can see on the front grill, we've got these aero flaps that are closed right now. Those will open up for increased cooling as necessary. Let's look under the hood here at this 3.5 liter V6 and this hybrid powertrain. So this is rated for, with a 4x4, 24 miles to the gallon combined. We've seen that on the highway pretty easily this week and uh, around town it's a little bit less. Of course, we've been getting on it quite a bit to uh, have some fun because this thing is super fast. Power boost is not an understatement. Uh, it's very, very quick. This is one of the quickest F-150s I've ever driven. Feels faster than like a Raptor or something like that. It's, it's pretty impressive. 430 horsepower, 570 pound-feet of torque. It's a beast. You've got some cool options here in the back seat. So you can flip these seats up very easily. They will lock in place. Unlock them just by pulling this little tab there. And then you can lower this piece very nicely if you open both sides. There we go. And that just lays completely flat and you can lock it in place and it doesn't go anywhere. And that's a ton of storage in the back seats. How cool is that? And then if you don't want stuff to slide under there, you just lift it up, lock it back in place, and you are good to go. Look at that, super easy. You get tons of storage space in the door panel, just so much room. Of course, this has the BNO sound system, a couple USB ports, another 120 volt, 20 amp AC outlet, just all the things. This seat will fold forward on this side, so you have access to your jack and uh, just tire kit and whatnot. Pretty great interior, so much to do here. You've got all of your trailer controls right here. You can steer with that dial without having to worry about which direction you steer to turn the trailer. Something I've never tried out, but uh, be worth seeing how it works someday. Your drive mode selector, all sorts of different drive modes that relate to you know, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, four low, off-roading, lots of capability in this truck. You can lock the rear diff in this, which is pretty awesome. I have this center display right now set to night mode, which I think is just a little bit more of an attractive aesthetic for this screen. The white can be a little bit bright and abrasive and a little more difficult to read icons, I think. A couple more cup holders back here. Another charge port, climate control vents, you know, all the things. Let's take this F-150 for a drive and really that's kind of the big difference here between this video and the others is just seeing how this hybrid system is on the road with the 10-speed. Before we get started with our drive today, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's video, Phantom Wallet. They've been a great sponsor for the channel and they are now launching the Phantom C, which is an Apple iPhone MagSafe card fanning wallet. It's launching on Kickstarter. You can get in early and back this project until March 24th. This Phantom C is very similar to their other minimalist wallets, but this just magnetizes to the back of your iPhone 12. You can still fan out all of your cards for easy access, and the built-in MagSafe magnets attach to any iPhone 12 or any Apple-certified MagSafe phone cases. This is the smallest and most minimal Phantom wallet ever. It's only eight millimeters thick and still retains RFID and NFC protection. If you guys have been thinking about getting a Phantom Wallet, this one might be a really good way to go. It is their smallest and most compact minimalist wallet yet. Anyway, big thanks to Phantom Wallet for their support of this channel and for sponsoring this video. All right, let's take this F-150 hybrid for a drive and see what it's like on the road. Of course, this being a hybrid, the engine is off. It'll kick on once I give it just a little bit of throttle. But you can kind of cruise around in parking lots sometimes in full electric mode. 
One of my favorite things about this truck is just the range. I think I've read that you can drive around 700 miles on a tank in this thing. If you guys can read the screen, we're down just under three quarters of a tank and we've almost driven 300 miles. Crazy. We still have 396 miles empty estimated range. Amazing. You'd never have to fill up gas in this thing. And there's the engine. Kicks on pretty smoothly. This is not Toyota hybrid smooth. The transitions between EV to hybrid mode, but it's pretty good. And I will say it is quite cool driving a truck that's a hybrid that you know you can do some electric miles in. In the last 297 miles, we've driven 26.7 of those miles in electric mode. Pretty neat. When you're just cruising around this F-150, it's very smooth, except for on cold starts. It takes things a little bit to warm up in this truck. And I've had some really, really harsh shifts this week. Uh, almost like single clutch supercar gearbox harsh. Um, I think it's the calibration of this 10 speed could use a little bit more work. And uh, again, this may be a pre-production truck too. I'm not entirely sure, but I've had some pretty rough uh, driving until things kind of get some temperature and then the transmission gets temperature in it then things smooth out quite a bit uh, so just a just a note there your experience may vary uh, the last f-150 we had um, I think maybe the battery was disconnected before we got it or something and it took about a week and 400 miles for it to kind of learn our driving style and it smoothed out considerably over the course of that week so I don't know exactly you know this trucks history if it's been in for service recently and they recalibrated things or updated things um, but we have had some rough shifts in this this week. Let's go through here. Show you guys the turning radius. Not amazing. <laughs> of course, this is just a big truck. I do really like this column shifter. It's super useful. It feels very nice. It actually feels a little higher quality than the, uh, the shifter down here that they have in the normal versions. We're in sport mode. Let's do a little zero to 60 here and see how we do. About five and a half seconds to 60, really impressive, maybe a little bit less. The amazing thing about this EcoBoost 3.5 is that it just, it's so quiet, even under power. The amount of noise and drama from the powertrain does not translate to the acceleration feel. You really get pushed in the back of your seat. This is this is faster than some sports cars, I think. And we haven't been driving this truck lightly all week. And according to the readout, at least, we've averaged around 21 miles to the gallon, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> Speedo just climbs like like it's nothing, like it doesn't care. I'll turn on this power flow meter so you guys can see what's going on with the hybrid system. Another screen I like to drive with is this EV coach. It kind of shows you how much leeway you get with your regenerative braking, how much you can press the throttle in full electric mode without the engine kicking on. It shows me there that 47% of my energy was returned on that braking. Like driving a lot of hybrid vehicles, this is a little bit more engaging, a little bit more involving, just because I don't know, you kind of want to you want to gamify the hybrid driving experience and kind of get the most out of it with every mile. It's fun getting a little bit more fuel economy. It's fun to see that 100% braking energy returned on the screen. And this truck really does drive so well. Besides the occasional rough shift, this powertrain is butter smooth. Handling is very impressive for a truck. The ride quality is awesome. These seats are incredibly comfortable. These are the cloth seats and I actually quite like them. It's kind of sad to see the extinction of cloth seats. I think there are so many uh, 
nice positives to a good cloth seat. It doesn't get as hot or as cold. Of course, this has heated seats for when you need them, but I don't know, I think it's nice to see that spec in a truck these days. It's just so quiet. It's a very peaceful driving experience in this F-150 hybrid. I think that if I were to get a truck, this F-150 would be up there with, you know, of course I would probably swing for like a Raptor or something, or something with a, you know, some performance and, and uh, jumping ability. But if I just needed a regular old truck to do truck things and be a daily driver, this would be at the top of my list. The hybrid powertrain, the usability and charging capability and just all of the systems in this with the battery and the hybrid system, I think would be so useful that I would just want to turn this into like a camping rig and uh, take it out into the wilderness and just live off the battery for a few weeks. When you're off throttle and you're into the braking, the engine will kick off and we'll just go to zero RPM. You'll see your oil temp gauge just vanish. <laughs> you can just hear a faint whir as the battery pack gets energy pumped into it from regenerative braking. The brake pedal is a little bit funky in this F-150. They kind of all are. It feels like a truck brake pedal. It's just kind of a it's kind of a spongy button almost, but you get used to it pretty pretty quickly, pretty easily. Very quiet over bumps. Really rough pavement doesn't unsettle it. It's pretty unflappable over rough terrain. You drive this down a back road or a dirt road with lots of washboarding and this truck is literally unfazed. It's pretty amazing. little bit of wind noise on the highway but that's it that's all you hear you don't even hear any tire whine and this is the tire whine road that we always drive on it which is really loud for some reason maybe it's just the smoothness of this pavement but every type of tire seems to just be super noisy on this stretch of highway and this is virtually silent the lane keep assist this pilot 360 system is awesome it really really does work well Radar guided cruise control is fantastic. It's so easy to control your following distance, turn on and off your lane keeping system, set your cruise control, five mile an hour increments. It's all it's just great. Very good ergonomics there by, on Ford's part. And that's one thing I do really like about this F-150 is, you know, for all the features, for all the tech, for all the stuff that they've put into this, you still get so many buttons and knobs and, and things that you can press that are physical. It's not all hidden behind a touch screen and uh, in this XLT and this spec I think this is kind of the ideal situation you could get for your F-150. The lane keep assist system does a really good job keeping you centered in the lane. Every now and then it'll be too far right or too far left but it figures itself out eventually. It'll even navigate turns quite well. Really excellent tuning on the Ford engineering team's part. Check out some of the highway pulling power this has. So we'll cancel cruise control. We'll turn lane keep system off. 70 miles an hour. I mean, it just doesn't care. Just awesome. Using my EV coach here to get the most out of our braking. It's not a ton of regen, but if you plan out your stopping distances, you can pretty much get, let's see what we got here, 91% energy return. <laughs>
let's put it into sport mode for just a bit of fun. Oh, and you can even have a manual shifting mode, which is great. You just press the uh, column shifter there. Amazing. Handling is really impressive. It's flat. This can almost match the speeds that you would get out of a passenger vehicle, which is pretty impressive. We'll put it into manual mode here, show you guys what that's like. Pretty responsive. I like that it's right next to the steering wheel. Very useful for towing if you're on a back road or if you just want to have control of your own gears. But I will say in sport mode, as a back road brawler, this thing would actually hustle. Yeah, these Pirelli Scorpion tires are very nice. And with these 20 inch wheels, you still get a little bit of sidewall. Unlike the 22s we had in our last F-150. see there the engine turned off even just for a little bit on the highway I found that I can occasionally cruise here and there at about 30 40 miles an hour on hybrid power maintain speed on level ground or if I'm slightly downhill everything will just kind of turn off and I'll be into regenerative braking which in a truck I think is pretty neat so how can we sum up this f-150 hybrid well I mean, this is without a doubt my favorite F-150 that I've driven yet out of the three. Um, this is probably the way that I would go. I think there's just so much, so many compelling reasons to get this hybrid system and, and so many more ways that you can use this. This is a $4,500 option for the hybrid powertrain in this XLT. Of course, the higher trims you go up, that, that price tag goes down a little bit. Um, but... For 4,500 bucks, if you're already spending 50 grand or so, eh, it's probably worth it. I think it'd be nice just for those use cases where you, know, you, have, you have to be honest how you're going to use a vehicle like this. But uh, I think just just to have that extra versatility would be so cool. It's a good thing and a bad thing, but I think there are probably too many choices for the F-150. It's just I mean you can really there have to be millions of different configurations if you include all the options in these trucks. And um, that's a good thing and a bad thing. I don't know how it speaks to reliability, but also at the same time, it's just it's nice to be able to get what you want. But the, uh, the options and choices are seemingly endless. Again, this is the roughest section of road on our test route, and this truck is just unfazed. It's amazing. So impressed. Again, engine completely shuts off on braking. Since the hybrid battery is turning the engine on, not a starter, stop-start is seamless, very smooth. Yeah, all week while driving this, I've really struggled to come up with any major cons to do with this F-150 XLT hybrid. In this spec, I think it's pretty ideal. go in here and see if we can test out the zone lighting. We'll just park right here and chill. 
you've got this secondary little screen, which is cool. And if you go into it, you can turn on all your zone lighting. So you can enable one side individually. I'm not sure if you can see that. Eh, it shows up a little bit at night, but if you want to do all zones, front and rear. I'll show you guys what that looks like outside the truck. Quite a bit of light. If you were in complete darkness here, you would have a pretty good maybe 15, 20 foot swath of light projected around the truck. Those mirror lights are not dim. And just think about being able to maintain that when you're cooking at your campsite or at night whenever you need a little bit of extra light to set up your tent or what have you. That'd be pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this one on this F-150 hybrid. A lot to cover, but uh, hopefully this kind of gives you guys an idea of my thoughts on this. We'll be having some more reviews on this on the Daily Motor YouTube channel and, of course, just pure driving on the winding road. Thanks again to our sponsor, Phantom Wallet. If you're interested in their new Kickstarter campaign, head on over there before it is too late and all that expires in a few days. Put some details in the description for you and the top comment. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.